three slab. All right, slab five. We're more than halfway there. Okay, so we're going to look at the electrical and mechanical properties of the heart. We're going to see the responses to direct ventricular stimulation, um, to sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation. We're going to um, dissect the double hip frog again. So we're going to use a full frog system. So they're a lot bigger.
happens through the L type calcium channels on the T tubules. Um, and these are not like the right ion receptors. All right, so like I said, for the calcium, the influence of extracellular calcium is very important. And that comes from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the further see your calcium, and then that induces your calcium induced calcium release. Um, and then your increase in intracellular calcium now will induce contraction the same way that you all know. So cardiac cycle, you have your ventricular filling where the AV valves open, the semilunar valves close, isovolumetric contraction, um, ventricular ejection, isovolumetric relaxation. You guys all know this, right? Um, systole is going to be your phase two and three, and your diastole is going to be phase four and one. Okay, so we have this pressure loop. So we're starting here, and mitral valve opens, you have the ventricular filling until the valve, mitral valve closes, and then you have your isovolumetric contraction, um, and then you have your ventricular ejection, isovolumetric relaxation, okay? Pressure loop. And then that brings us to the frame starling law. The frame starling law states that the heart will contract um, with more force during systole if it is filled more during diastole. Okay? Um, so you can see here we have more filling, so then we're going to have a greater force. Alright, you guys should know this. So during lab, we're going to see the electrical mechanical activity. You see your atrial contraction. Alright, the increase is the systole, and you can still decrease the diastole. You're still going to see your QRS waves, uh, but it's the sum of all the electrical activity. It's not a single action potentially. Okay. And then we are going to force extrasystolic contractions in the frog. So the extrasystolic is a premature ventricle contraction. And then that is caused by the depolarization of the ventricle rather than using the SA node. And then the extrasystolic contraction can be larger or smaller um, than the beat before. If it's smaller, it's due to the frame starling law, and that's because we're giving it less time to fill. And then if it's larger, it's due to the calcium building up. And that's um, similar to what we did in the frequency, remember? Calcium was just one of the reasons was the calcium buildup. And you're also going to see a compensatory pause, and that's a skipped beat due to the extracellular contraction, and then it needs time to um, get back on rhythm. Okay. And the beats following your compensatory pause are usually larger in force than the, pre than the previous beat, and again, that's due to uh, the Frank Starling law. Okay, so in lab, we guys are going to stimulate during, so we said here, this is acetylate, systole, and you guys are going to stim, uh, stimulate the frog once during early diastole, so we're kind of going to split this in half, and whenever you guys see the beat coming, you guys are just going to stimulate when it's up here, that'll be your early diastole. And then you're also going to try to get it to late diastole. Okay. And you should see an extra systolic contraction. Okay. So here's our extra, here's our normal beat. Here's our extra systolic contraction. And then now, since we've paused this, um, this is our compensatory pause. Okay, right? We need that pause in order for the pacemakers to get back rhythm, and then you'll see your post extracellular contraction is usually bigger than your last beat. Okay, um, the vagus nerve takes the parasympathetic appearance to the heart, um, your neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, um, and then so we're going to stimulate the vagus nerve, which is we're going to see a brief 
tachycardia, right, a decrease in the heart rate, and the vagal um, innervation. Um, so the conduction nodes of the heart is not uniform. So many vagal fibers to the SA node um, are, are equivalent, but few of them are not. Um, so the vagal stimulation is going to stop our action or slow down our heart. Um, but then, like I said, eventually other pacemakers are going to take over. And those are just your other pacemakers you have. But it's not going to be to the same strength as your SA node, right? So that was your fastest, strongest pacemaker cell. Um, but your other cell can take um, pacemaker cell to take over. Okay, so then we're going to inject the heart with epinephrine.
Okay, and you're going to see here on the transducer, it's not um, just up and down. <coughs> you're going to calibrate it up and down, but then you're going to twist it at an angle so it has a perfect um, line to the transducer to the heart.